things that go into the process of making something look really desirable or sexy or food pornish or whatever terminology people use, for me it's about light, almost exclusively. I think the food has to look great on the plate, but to really, really make it look like something you want to reach through the screen or reach through the, the page and grab and eat is about feeling it too. I mean, you have to look at something and go, mm, I can't wait to put the camera down and eat that. And I want to capture that and share that with whoever is looking at the picture. I really like food. And if you don't have that, I think it's harder to translate it. It's harder to take a picture of something and make it look really desirable if you're not having that same emotion at the same time. We worked on the one column, Recipes for Health, which was producing one new food picture every day, Monday through Friday, year round for seven years. And the opportunity to shoot on that level, in that volume, changed my life in a lot of ways. You can really start to see the food as a piece of art. And then we have the responsibility to translate that one step further into our interpretation of that. And I'm kind of a, a sponge. I like to learn. I'm, I'm always reading and watching and looking and learning. I, I don't ever feel I, that process ends. Sometimes when something comes out of the kitchen, it looks great just the way it is. It doesn't need any help. And after a lot of years of doing this, you start to recognize that's only going to work from the top perspective. That will only work as a close-up. We all have these food experiences in our lives, and they all have cultural cues, you know, with certain holidays or certain feelings or certain emotions. These are the things that make really good food photography. Yeah.